Welcome everybody to the It's Never Too Late show. I'm Suzanne Oshima and I'm a life and love transformational coach at Your Next Amazing Story. I am so excited because we have another amazing guest today, Dr. Diana Kirshner, and she's going to talk about how it's never too late to empower your high value self-confidence. So welcome, Diana, to the show. I'm so excited to have you. (laughs) I'm so excited to be with you. I'm so excited. I love what you're doing. I love your work. I know. Well, you and I are both on that same mission to truly empower and inspire women. So I would love for you to share before you start sharing your story, because I know you have a really powerful story is how did you get involved as a psychologist in the love business? (laughs) Well, you know, I uh, it was a long, long journey. I, I wound up getting a, a master's degree and a PhD in psychology basically because I was coming from this place where I did not feel empowered. I did not feel confident. I did not feel lovable. And I certainly didn't feel high value. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I, I went into getting those degrees to figure out how to get all those things. Do you know what I'm saying? How to get all these those things. And um, and it was helpful to learn about that stuff in, in school, but it was not the biggest the biggest bang for the buck in terms of helping myself that I did, which we can get to later in the interview. But I, I also I wound up focusing on love relationships even after I got my PhD. Uh, because of an experience I had at a yoga retreat, which we can talk about. (laughs) Yeah, I would love to hear. (laughs) Well, you know, um, I, uh, I, I think you know that I was born the fifth daughter, uh, to an Italian family that only wanted boys. And so when I was born, uh, uh, my father said, I, another daughter, fifth daughter, I don't want to see her. So he didn't come to the hospital. Um, he only said, I love you once. He was actually drunk. I mean, he was doing the best he could. So it didn't mean anything because he was drunk. Um, so, uh, I grew up feeling it was too late for me to ever have love, ever have confidence, ever be deserving. I mean, um, I was, uh, socially phobic, actually afraid to speak to people, which of course, you know, comes with that kind of background. And, um, and I really thought I could never have love, never have lasting passion and love, that's for sure. And I had a lot of problems with that. And um, I dated all the guys who were wrong for me, took crumbs, tried to make them love me, you name it, I did it. Uh, flame outs, you know, passionate flame outs that went nowhere. And I lucked out because I got a fairy godmother who came into my life. Aww. <laughs> and that was, that was the big big transformation. I got a fairy godmother and the fairy godmother told me I deserved love and I, you know, have high value and I was worth it and everything. And, and out of that, I was able to actually find and marry my wonderful soulmate, my, uh, my husband who's I've been married to for decades now. But anyway, getting back to your question, I mean, you wanted to know how I focused on love. I mean, I, it was coming out of that background because, I mean, I had to learn everything about love from square one, you know, or ground zero, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I had to learn everything about love. And then I went to this yoga retreat about 15 years ago, mm-hmm. never expecting anything to like this to happen. I just went to a yoga retreat and he was doing the, the leader was doing this posture. He had us just doing this and he kept saying, all you want to do is your life's purpose. All you want to do is your life's purpose. And all of us started weeping. We were all weeping, weeping, weeping in this class. And what occurred to me is that millions of people came to me and said, teach us about love. Wow. Yeah. And I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop crying and I experienced it as the, you know, my true calling at that time. And it all integrated because here I was born into a situation with no love and here now I was able to have it and now to share it. So, um, that's been a tremendous journey 
for me. I mean, <laughs> so it was truly from your own life experience of not feeling loved by your father. Was it the same for your mother too, that you didn't feel loved by her also? My mother didn't want me at all. Oh, uh, she thought she was done having children. She had very, very difficult childbirth experiences mm -hmm. at that time. They had, they were pretty archaic and um, she really didn't want another child. Uh, she was feeling like it put her life at risk. It wasn't her fault. But she, you know, no, I, I really was not welcomed. Uh, I had some older sisters, obviously, mm -hmm. who were, they enjoyed me as their little baby doll. <laughs> Did you but feel the like, love from your sisters at least? I, yeah, I got some love from my sisters until I got a little older and I became, you know, a pain. So then they rejected me when I was about like seven or eight. <laughs> right. Well, so how did you find, I mean, it's easy to say that you started to study about love, but how did you truly find the love within you for yourself and building back up your self-confidence, your self-esteem and your self-worth? Because that's not easy to do as a child. And you've done that your whole life, right? Yes. Yes. Well, you know, I read every book on love. I studied everything. I was, it was it was helpful, but it wasn't really doing it. You know, I needed a corrective emotional experience. I needed a kind of reparenting, the kind of reparenting that a real fairy godmother gives you. You know, the fairy godmother comes, she sees Cinderella in the ashes. She doesn't see a, a, a lost, little, useless, worthless girl. She sees a princess, right? Cinder, Cinderella's god, uh, the fairy godmother, sees the princess, helps the princess become who she's really meant to be. Mm -hmm. And... Likewise, I had a uh, fairy godmother come into my life. It was actually a man, uh, but he was like a fairy godmother. And he kept saying, you are amazing. You're incredible. You're smart. I'm like, me, I'm smart. I'm so stupid. This is ridiculous. You're smart. You're beautiful. You deserve love. You're you know, incredible. So he was like the corrective, loving parent in my life. And little by little by little, I took that in. I took in that love. I took that in and I said those things to myself, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been able to do incredible things. You know, I think you know that my, my book, uh, Love in 90 Days, which was a bestseller when it first came out, just was just reissued in its 10th anniversary edition. <laughs> oh, I love that. It's helped tens and tens of thousands of people. I've been able to um, uh, actually have my own PBS TV show, which for somebody who couldn't speak to anybody, <laughs> was pretty amazing, but it was about accessing this high value self-confidence. I call this the diamond self-identity so and actually giving myself a name, a new name. So, Diana, I know, and you've, it's funny because I've known you for years and I always remembered that was one of the things that you brought up when you first spoke at my event was the diamond self. So can you explain to the ladies what that is? Yes. You know, the, the part of the brain that actually represents you, your identity, I, me, mine, or your name, uh, is constantly in flux. It's constantly changing. It's not set. It's not a neural net that's completely rigid. So you can go in there and deliberately change the notion of who you are. You can change your identity. You can move into a high value, self-confident identity. And uh, we've done this. I've done this for myself. I've done this. We've done this with my team of love mentor coaches with women all over the world. It is our most popular <laughs> work, actually, um, because women really need this. They need to feel better about themselves. And you get to name yourself. You get to name yourself. And you build on your own skills, your own quirks, your own wonderful nature. And also you add in who you want to be, right? And then you name yourself like beloved mighty Isis, saucy minx, um, you know, vivacious vixen. My name uh, actually is the radiant beacon of loving guidance. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's a struggle sometimes if you're not feeling good about yourself initially, but you 
go with it. You know, you go with your light. You know, you don't hide your light under a bushel basket. You go with it and play with that name. And um, really astonishing things can happen. It, it really, really opens up new possibilities. Never in a million years would I ever have thought that I would have these things happening, that I would be on this mission, that I'd be talking to you, that I'd be helping tens of thousands of people. Never, never. I thought of myself as a stupid, worthless piece of crap. I'm not kidding. So, Diana, when did you discover your diamond self? Was it before you became a psychologist or after? I would say more or less during the time I was uh, becoming a psychologist, you know, and it was coming in experientially through this uh, reparenting, this experience of being uh, approved, appreciated, uh, you know, ha being held in high esteem, uh, being validated and, um, you know, little by little, the name really emerged, but it was from an experiential process. You know, that's what we do in our coaching program. We provide an experiential process that brings Cinderella to the ball, whatever that ball is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> So for you, Diana, and even after you became a psychologist, but did you continue to do the work on your diamond self so that you kept building back up your self-confidence and self-esteem and self-worth? It, it never stops. Never stops. It's not like you stop, you get to some place and no, it never stops. It never stops, you know, because you're, you're going more and more and more into uh, the bliss, the joy, the fun of it, uh, and away from self-doubt and that mean negative voice in your head that wants to come in and grab you. I still have that come in and grab me sometimes, you know. I still have that voice come in and try to grab me, you know. And um, so I have to re reset my identity, you know. I'm the radiant beacon of loving guidance. That's all I'm here for, you know. Um but that voice can come in. It's it, it'll, lately it likes to say you're you're old. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it, it's too late because you're old, right? And I say it's never too late, no matter your age. But I think it's interesting, um, you know, and I I appreciate that you shared that it never ends because I think a lot of women would look at you, Diana, as someone who's so accomplished and look at her. She's a psychologist. She has it all together. And I love that you're vulnerable and sharing that sometimes it still tries to come in and grab you and you have to keep working at it. It's not like you got there after you became a psychologist and you're good, right? It's you've kept working on this and it's in every everyday process because we can get triggered by anything and everything that could take us from here down to here and it's this constant um flow of energy where we're feeling you know on top of the world one day and another day we're feeling like oh, i'm not, i'm not worthy or whatever it is right exactly and especially when you're starting something new when you're starting something new, it seems daunting. It seems like, oh, my God, I can't do this one. And the old demons will come up. You know, you're too stupid. You're too, you know, whatever. You're too weak. You're too whatever it is. It comes up that ridiculous negative self-talk that is, is just horrible. I call that uh, the disappointing self, the disappointing self-talk. You You know, you can't do it. You're not good enough. You're not whatever it is. And so you start something new. <laughs> And you have to really reassert your uh, your your high value, self confident diamond self identity, right? So it's and and it's I have an interesting way to do that. I hope we have time. I want to teach everybody an interesting way to do that. Yeah, I would love for you to. Okay, so when that comes up, right? You want to make a statement of self confidence an affirmation, and then you want to actually alternate between that and the disappointing self-talk, right? Because you cement the new affirmation into the exact part of the brain that has that disappointing self-talk. And as you do that, the affirmation becomes real. A lot of times people will make affirmations, but they won't become real. It's like, ugh, uh, you know, I'm highly successful. No, I'm not. No, I'm not, you know. Uh, that's because we have a knee-jerk kind of reaction 
two things. And when you try something forward looking, the, the tendency is for the brain to go backwards. It zigzags. So we ride that wave and make it actually actually work for you. It's I call this the, the uh, five minute manifestation miracle. I have it in the uh, new chapter in the book. <laughs> I'd love that. So let's let's do it. Let's do it. Would you like to do it? Of course. Okay, so what would be an affirmation you would like to make right now? Po- you mean a positive one? Yes. Um, or like the negative self-talk that I've told myself? Or- no, you're going to do the affirmation first. Like I have an incredibly powerful impact on women all over the world with my amazing story venture (laughs) yeah well i love that you said that because that truly is my my, when you talked earlier about your core calling that truly is my core calling is that i truly want to inspire and empower all women of all ages to have a midlife awakening not a midlife crisis a midlife awakening to realize that it's never too late to create their next amazing story whether it's in life or love or whatever it is you can do anything and everything if you just take the first step well that is unstoppable in you my love because i know you you are unstoppable (laughs) it's my passion and that's what keeps me going every day Okay, so we have to make a simple affirmation, and then I'm going to prompt you to say affirmation, then I'm going to prompt you to say whatever comes up in terms of negatives, and some other comments, any comments, negative or positive, that come up in relation to it by saying fears, doubts, or other reactions, and then you're going to say whatever comes to mind, and we're going to go back to the affirmation. So what's the affirmation? Let's make it simple and easy to repeat. Uh, I'm a powerful, inspiring woman. Okay. Affirmation. Say Uh, it. I'm, I'm, a I'm, I'm a powerful, inspiring woman. Okay. Any fears, doubts, or other reactions? Uh, I don't know if I can do this. Beautiful. Okay. Affirmation. Uh, I'm a powerful, inspiring woman. Excellent. Any fears, doubts, or other reactions? It's scary. I'm scared. Beautiful. Affirmation. I'm a powerful, inspiring woman. Whoa. Any fears, doubts, or other reactions? Uh, I don't know if I can get there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful affirmation. I'm a powerful, inspiring woman. Wow. You feel it as it changes, it's becoming more real and fleshed out? (laughs) Yeah, you know what was interesting? I love that we did this because when I said what my fears were, when I said the first one, I had this tension in my body. I could feel it like, ugh. And then as you kept asking me, I started to feel like I was relaxing more into it. And I was like, why is this such a big deal? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what happens. What happens is that you're not fighting the, the negative comments. You're allowing them to be, which means that they don't grab you. They don't grab you and persist. And you go gently back to your affirmation. So you go right back to your affirmation. And so you're training your brain. You know, it's the part of the brain says, you know, I don't think you can do it or I'm afraid. And you're going, "Uh, you know, I'm a powerful (laughs) woman. (laughs) And it, it creates. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because, um, when you asked me what my fears were, I, I could feel the resistance within me that I didn't want to say it. And I know that comes up for other women because we don't want to say it because we feel like it makes it true, right? But we're, what we don't realize is that we're actually giving it power by resisting it because we're trying to avoid it. And I feel the same. But then right after I said it, I was like, I started to relax. I felt less tension. And I was like, oh, I'm less tense about this now. Yes, yes. I use this process. To this day, I use this process all the time. It's one of the most powerful processes you'll ever use or I ever have found, you know. And you can do it with your diamond self name, too. Like, you know, I am the radiant goddess of love and light. Mm. No, you're not. You're a piece of shit. I am the radiant goddess of love and light. Are you kidding me? I am the radiant goddess of love and light. Oh, I am the radiant goddess of love and light. 
<laughs> yeah, it's well, it's interesting too because you know, like you know that negative self talk or the self critic that comes up for each and every person is that the things that we say to ourselves. We wouldn't even say to our worst enemy sometimes. And how can we talk to ourselves like that? So I would love for all women to raise themselves up and commit to talking and being more kind to themselves in a positive manner instead of bringing yourself down, right? Absolutely. Yes, 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 definitely. It's so freeing. And can a woman do this? Because I hear a lot of women say about the age thing is that, no, it's too late for me. Uh, you know, I like a lot of women were brought up in an environment similar to yours, not exactly, but similar. And so they're like, no, it's too late for me. You know, I'm in my 50s or 60s, whatever it is. And they're like, I don't know. It's definitely not too late. You know, one of my love mentor coaches did not get married for the first time, did not get married for the first time till she was 70 years old. <laughs> oh, I love that. And I love her. She is so brilliant because she knows for a fact it's never too late, right? It's never too late. I mean, how old was Louise Hay when she started her, her uh, the Hay House? I think she was like 70 or something. She, I don't remember the exact age, but you're right. She's another amazing story where she started later in life, Hay House. And look, that's a huge business. And it's an amazing business because it's so inspiring, empowering, and awakening for all, everyone, right? Exactly. What a gift to the world, right? And I think everyone, or not that I think, I know everyone has a gift to the world. I I just know it. I just know it. We've seen it so many times in our Love Mentor Coaching Program that each person has many gifts to give the world. Uh, and as they access their high-value, self-confident, diamond self-identity, I mean, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. We've had women write books, start companies, of course, obviously find love, you know, lasting mm -hmm. soulmate love, even after they've been hurt, rejected, uh, left in dire circumstances, left with STDs. I mean, cheated on. It doesn't matter. Women are the best. <laughs> well, well so I think courageous. women are resilient and we get to lift each other up so that we all achieve our dreams. I would love to ask you about your one of your love coaches that you said found love at 70 and got married for the first time. What do you think shifted within her that she was able to do that and find love later in life? Well, um, I mean, I, I don't know the whole story because, you know, that was before she actually started working with me. Um, uh, but uh, she never stopped working on herself and she never stopped giving herself new goals. She, she didn't really want to be married before then. You know what I'm saying? So she gave herself a new goal, like in her 60s, which was to be married. I mean, how incredible is that? That is. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for the first time, too. So, uh, I mean, really, you guys who are watching The Sky's the Limit, you know, even if you feel you absolutely can't do it, you can do it. <laughs> you can. And, and you know, I just want to lightly touch on that, what you brought up about what her timeline for her life looked like, is I, w I would love for all women to finally let go of what they think the perfect timeline is to find love, get married, or whatever it is, write a book, start a business, because the right time is whenever it's right for you, right? Exactly. And everybody has a unique timeline a unique life that they're living uh and no one is exactly like you it's like snowflakes and um you have a unique contribution that no one else can make no one even though it seems to you that it's nothing or that everyone's d doing it or that's not needed <laughs> you have a unique <laughs> all of which i told myself <laughs> but you have a unique contribution that only you can make it's so cool it's so amazing yeah and you're doing more amazing things too right 
Yeah, I mean, I uh, actually pretty soon I'm going to have an online university that <laughs> will be uh, actually um, teaching people how to become relationship coaches. So that's kind of cool. That's a brand new uh, endeavor, and um, but having a lot of fun uh, promoting the new book, the the new edition of Love in 90 Days. It just came out uh, beginning of 2019, which was pretty cool, pretty exciting. Ah, oh, well, that's awesome. So, Diana, how can the ladies find you? Well, the beauty of it is I have a free gift for everyone, which I think you're going to want to take advantage of. And it is at my website, lovein90days.com. That's lovein90days.com. And, uh, you know, we talked about the fairy godmother. And, <laughs> and I... <laughs> I have a team of love mentor coaches who are fairy godmothers. They really, really are. And um, you guys can have a free 40-minute session by phone or Skype with one of them. Uh, all you need to do is go to lovein90days.com and click on the coaching tab. And here's the important part. When you fill out the form, you have to put in uh, Suzanne sent me. You have to put in Suzanne sent me, and then you'll have your session by phone or Skype. But um, uh, the only way I can guarantee that you can get a session is if you put in Suzanne sent me because sometimes we get too many requests for sessions and we have to turn people away. So definitely put that in. You'll get the VIP treatment. I love Suzanne. So you, you get her VIP treatment. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Diana. That's so generous of you. So thanks, everybody, for joining us on the It's Never Too Late show. The show is available both in video and audio format, which are both available on yournextamazingstory.com. And if you would like to get our free ebook, How to Create Your Next Amazing Story in Three Simple Steps, you can click right here on the video or you can go to yournextamazingstory.com.